Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonkey, and welcome to another video of the Condemned to PVM series. In this video, as promised in the last one, I will be going into Virago, as well as another boss, which you guys will see in just a second. But this has probably been one of my favorite episodes to make so far, if not even the favorite episode, because I just had an absolute blast doing the PVM in itself, and didn't get particularly lucky, but overall had a good time. Should make a really humongous amount of money. Did make some good cash doing both of these bosses, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first out of the two bosses was Rise of the Sixth, so spoilers, the second one is Virago, first one is Rise of the Sixth, so two kind of higher tier PVM bosses, these are probably two out of the highest tier bosses other than Araxor as well, which I would consider a higher tier boss even though it is a solo one, it's quite difficult and I'd rank it up there in terms of difficulty right along with Rise of the Sixth. So unfortunately Rise of the Sixth and Virago, I have been somewhat limited in how often I can do them, I wish I could do them a lot more. The only problem with these bosses is it can be somewhat difficult to find a team. Rise of Six isn't normally so bad to find a team as long as I wait till later on in the day when it's not school or work hours, but Virago has been a humongous struggle to find a team sometimes, so hopefully I will be able to get that found, and I just have been having a lot of fun at Rise of Six, admittedly, so even though I've had to do that instead of Virago um, when I have been trying to get the Virago done, I haven't minded all that much. So one thing that I did have to learn with Rise of Six is the new Shadow Realm mechanic fairly recently because it used to be that you would just run over some fires and put the brothers into the fires and that's how the Shadow Realm went. It was a really weird and dumb mechanic because it could cost you some kills sometimes since the brothers kill timers did not stop if you were put into the Shadow Realm. And now what the Shadow Realm means is you just do double damage to the brothers as well as they do double damage to you. So it can be a good thing, it can mean that the kills can go a lot faster but it's also more dangerous if you come across some of the more dangerous mechanics of the game such as the Barrows Brothers spinning on you or you getting hit by RM's lightning because that damage is doubled as well and that admittedly caused out of the few kills that we did fail that was the one that causes most of the deaths is the lightning attacks because that is just deadly and sometimes it can spawn on top of you and good game you. Luckily though we did not fail too many kills because for the most part I was going with teammates that were pretty good, most of them were quite a bit better than I was, and we managed to be fairly successful in our kills and also get some fairly fast ones as well. Didn't break any records or anything, but we were getting fairly consistent kills and it overall is very very good money. So the first shield that happened did not go to me, it went to my friend Nangly and he got a Merciless which is the magic shield and also the middle one in price. The melee shield is the most expensive, although I'm not really sure why, because you'd think the magic one would be. And then the rain shield is the cheapest, and the magic shield is right in the middle. So the second one was another merciless kite shield by one of the other guys. And I will not be splitting shields, because that's how most ROTS teams go. You don't split the shields, you just keep them if you get them. They're not really worth a whole lot these days anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So I will have to get all of the shields myself as unique drops. So that might take a while, but I'm not really going to be too upset about it, because ROTS is a lot of fun and some pretty good money as well. And then the next one was a Vengeful Kite Shield, which was the second one I've ever seen. The first time I ever saw a Vengeful Kite, it went to me, but that was a very, very long time ago. So I will have to get all three unique shields on my own, but I will be showing additionally any drops that any other people get, because that's kind of cool. I do believe we got one other shield as well that I did not show uh, quite a while ago as well. So the first shield that went to me was a Merciless Kite Shield, which was a nice 5 mil. So that's pretty good, and it broke about uh, 160 chest or so dry streaks. So so I was pretty happy about that one to finally get it. It's not worth a whole lot, just 5 mil, but you got to think if you get several of these shields, they really do add up over time, and you're already making really good money even without getting any shields just because you can do these rots chests so fast. It's a very short boss fight, which is one of the favorite things about it. And then I additionally got a Vengeful Shield later on in the same trip, about 5 kills later or so. So that Vengeful Kite, not worth a whole lot. It's only about 3.6 mil, but that does mean I have 2 out of the 3 unique shields. So I just have to get a Malevolent Kite Shield as well, which is the melee shield and the most expensive one. And then I will have all 3 of the shields done. So I'm really looking forward to that one. So looking at the overall progress from ROTS, obviously there's only three drops from this boss, so there's not really a whole lot of drops I need to get, and it shouldn't take too long to get the third one, but who knows, maybe I could get several duplicates before I finally run across that malevolent kite shield, and I wouldn't mind that too much because ROTS is a lot of fun, but I am 186 chests, at least chests that have been logged into Rise of the Six and really enjoying it so far, and I'm going to be making some bank. It's not nearly as good money as it used to be because admittedly some of the raw materials have dropped a lot in price, such as rock tails, for example, aren't worth a whole lot, and the energies themselves aren't worth a whole lot. Also, the shields aren't worth a whole lot, but even with the crash prices, it's still pretty good money. It's still better money than something like QBD, for example, as long as you're with a team and that is not failing a whole lot of kills, and it's a lot of fun as well. Really enjoy this boss, and it does contend for my favorite boss in the game. I think Virago still holds that spot, but Rots is a lot of fun as well. 
Speaking of Virago, I tried to do quite a bit of Virago as well. It can be fairly difficult to get Virago to kill sometimes just because it's difficult to find people to go. But I have been adding more and more people as I continue to Virago, just trying to get people on the friends list that know how to DPS so I can form teams sometimes. And typically when I form teams, we have a lot of success and it's just a lot more fun to go with friends than on a random team. But I have tried a few random teams that I was just invited to and that's gone uh, okay. It hasn't gone really so great. So for the most part, when I Virago, I bomb tank. Admittedly, I'm not really a huge fan of Virago DPS. I will still go on trips as a Virago DPS if we are going in a team that's going to be doing several kills because that's just really worth doing to knock some Virago kills out of the way. But for the most part, I do try to bomb tank while doing it. And I started out with doing a range bomb tank using the Sagi, and that's kind of a newbie way to do it, admittedly. But eventually, I did upgrade the Seismics and decided to Mage Bomb tank instead because you do a little bit more damage that way and you can switch to a dual wield during phase five just to make sure you succeed the phase if the dpsers are failing or anything like that so overall it went fairly well i got over 50 virago kills done i did indeed get a drop as well and that will be coming up here pretty quickly Probably my plan for Virago is just wait until it's a really easy rotation, such as Scopulus or the Falling Rocks. Those are probably the easiest two rotations, at least in terms of finding people to go with. They were not the easiest rotations for bomb tanks, but for DPS, those are probably the two easiest. And then I'll just try to no-life it and constantly form teams and do as much Virago as possible. And if I do that for maybe a couple rotations, I'll probably be able to get Virago done. And that's going to be really nice to get this one out of the way, even though I really do enjoy this boss quite a bit. So one thing I finally have to go over is is am I going to go for the Virago pets or not because it's a 1 in 5k drop rate. Well, for those of you who don't know, I make YouTube videos and these typically take up quite a bit of time, especially when I have to play on my Iron Man account and stuff. So I don't really have time to just PVM all day. Typically when I go on a Virago trip, I'll do maybe 4 or 5 kills and I can go on maybe a couple a week on average. So with that being said, no, I'm not going to be able to get the pet just because it would take up too much time. So I did wind up getting one drop from Virago during the kills that I did do, and admittedly this is a slightly older clip, this was around Halloween time, it was when I was just barely getting into Virago for this series at least, and I was just starting to keep track of kills towards Condemned to PVM, but we did get, end up getting a Seismic Wand, which was a really nice split, it was worth a little bit more back then than it is now, and I believe it was a 6 man split as well, so it was a little bit over 100 mil profit just from that wand alone, which was very very nice, so I was excited about that, and one thing that I might be willing to consider is perhaps getting both the wand and the orb to me on the ground because this wand did not go to me so even though it was a split I would count it however I might consider going for both the seismic wand and the seismic orb on the ground in my chat bar and that would be fairly hype if that did wind up happening instead of going for that pet just because I can't really devote several months of my life to Virago and sacrifice YouTube videos, a whole bunch of other stuff while doing that. But as a bomb tank, you do get drops fairly often, which is one of my favorite things about it. So it would be very doable to eventually get both of the seismics on the ground to me. So that might be something I'll do. I'll think about that in the future. Depends on how much fun I'm having with Virago, I suppose. For the Virago stats, probably the most barren thumbnail so far because he only has two unique drops or three if you count the Ancient Summoning Stone, which is how you get the pet. But 51 kills in so far, and hopefully I will get that singularity within the next 49 kills because I want to do 100 kills to get the final boss title eventually anyway. So I will be doing those, and if the singularity happens within that 49 kills, that would be awesome. Now is finally the time of the video where we get into the price checks, the ROTS price check first of all, and my goodness, that is a nice looking inventory, up to 272 energies already, which is still a fair amount even with their fairly low value, and look at that, 51 million just in energies, 107 million total from the ROTS altogether, so even counting supply costs, that's at least 90 million of profit, which is insane, very, very good money, and compared to Virago, I really have not spent a whole lot of time at ROTS either, so it's still great profit. Profit. And now for the Virago price check. That is a lot of Triskelion key fragments. Every single time you get one, it says so in your chat bar that a golden beam has appeared and it's kind of a troll. But altogether, the Virago split was really nice. That 107 mil cash from that seismic wand. The rest of the drops, not so nice. Virago is honestly pretty terrible money unless you get a wand or orb, especially considering it takes so long to find a team and for everyone to bank and all that. That's by far the most frustrating part of it. But if you can get a good team, it can be a lot of fun and also good profit if you get lucky. So if we add up all the money that I made during this episode, it comes to a total of 235.8 mil. That's quite ridiculous, making this the most profitable episode so far, although just about every episode has been extremely profitable and also turning the final series profitable 
profit into 854 mil so far, which is absolutely crazy. That's really close to the one bill mark, and I'm hoping I will pass that perhaps in the next episode. We'll see. Depends on how many drops I end up getting. That would be really cool to make one bill from PVM in just a measly six episodes, but I do think it's very doable. So to end off here, if you would like to watch a loot video of 100 rots chests, I do have that on the screen. Unfortunately, I have not yet made a loot video for Virago, but hopefully when I eventually reach 100 Virago kills logged in the series, I will be able to make one of them as well. Pretty excited for that. Anyway, that's about all for me. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I'll see you within a week or two with the next Condemned PVM video. It might take a little while because I do need to focus on Iron Man some, but I will see you when that video happens. For now, farewell.